It's always fascinating to me when you see people that end up being such relevant figures in the world and then see it all come crashing down for them. There's a time frame where they seem inevitable, but eventually things end up derailing and most of the time it's because of what they done or said that makes the general public look at them in a very different way. We've seen this so many times, whether it's musicians, YouTubers, and athletes. And speaking of athletes, Danica Patrick is the first athlete that comes to mind that falls into that category. I'm pretty sure everyone is familiar with that name by now. A female race car driver that was a decent Indy car driver and a terrible NASCAR driver. I'm keeping it 100. It's nothing really there when it comes to her racing resume, but she had moments throughout her career that were historic for women in motorsports. These historic moments is what kept the hype train going throughout most of her racing career. As soon as she made it to the big stages in auto racing, the rocket was attached to her back immediately. Not even halfway through her rookie year in IndyCar, she had her first big moment as she almost won the Indianapolis 500. Even though she got passed for the win with 7 to go, she checked off a lot in her first Indy 500. She started 4th and finished 4th, which is the highest starting and finishing position for a woman in the Indy 500, and she was the first woman to lead laps in that race history. So now the rocket is attached and it has skyrocketed her into stardom and that's just after five races into her rookie year. People are now aware of who Danica Patrick is. It's not like she disappeared after that Indy 500 performance. She went on to have a pretty solid rookie year. 12 in the points and scored three poles. So you started seeing her in a lot of commercials and let's be real, it wasn't all because of her performance on the track. Ever heard of the phrase sex sells? Here's Danica Patrick who is looked at as an attractive individual. Then you factor in the potential she's showing behind the wheel of an Indy car and it's pretty easy to make her the most marketable driver in the field by far. To be honest, Indy car needed something big to happen because they didn't have a lot going for them. Open wheel racing in America had the whole split storyline going on which hurt their status in the states. So Danica is being pushed to the forefront despite not putting up the greatest results but at least she wasn't making herself look silly. In 2008 she would reach her biggest achievement in her racing career and that's winning at Motegi. And yeah it was all field mileage so there's some people that don't view it that highly but regardless it was still a huge victory. She was the first woman to win an IndyCar race and now the rocket that's attached to her back will launch her into superstardom. She goes on to pick up GoDaddy as a sponsor in 2010 and she's doing more commercials and photo shoots than ever. And man, you can tell times were different because you already know these commercials would be perceived differently if they were airing these type of commercials in the 2020s. Danica, by the way, also helped her image by not coming off too controversial, at least when the cameras were in front of her. She's known for being a pretty feisty competitor, but people actually love that about her because it showed that she was passionate. But other than that, she mostly came off pretty high spirited in front of the media. Danica Patrick entered the 2010s with being the talk of the town and that would end up increasing more when she announced that she was going from open wheel to stock cars. Miss Popular would end up driving for Mr. Popular Dale Hart Jr. in the NASCAR Nationwide Series aka the NASCAR Xfinity Series. NASCAR fans welcomed Danica with open arms. She had a lot of support from many people. There was a lot of people that wanted to see her succeed. I guess this is when Danica Mania became a thing because I don't think it was anybody out there that was hoping she would fail. Danica's peak when it came to her popularity was in the early 2010s. Despite her not so stellar Xfinity results, people were still on the Danica hype train. It's no secret that Danica was rushed to the Cup Series. The smart decision would have been to let her do another season or two of Xfinity before moving her up to the Cup level. When she got thrown into the Cup Series, it was the beginning of the end, but at the time, we didn't know that. Everyone was patient with Danica at first. 2013 was her first full-time season in the Cup Series, and if you thought about it logically, you kind of already knew it was going to be a struggle for her to start off. If drivers like Juan Pablo Montoya and Sam Hunters Jr., who are very high-profile drivers by the way, just look at their racing resumes, if those guys struggle with the transition into stock cars, then you knew it was definitely going to be tough for Danica. But unlike them, Danica accomplished something huge right from the jump, and that was winning the poll for the 2013 Daytona 500, the first race of the season. The general consensus say this was rigged, we'll never truly know, but rigged or not, it got people talking leading up to the biggest race of the year. And I don't know what it is with Danica Patrick and her rookie year at prestigious events, but when she ends up making history, it's not just one historic accomplishment, but it's multiple. First woman to win a pole in the Cup Series, became the first woman to lead laps under green in a Daytona 500. 
first woman to just lead in the Daytona 500 and her eighth place result was the highest finish by a woman in the Daytona 500. But y'all know the classic saying in NASCAR, the real season starts after Daytona and she struggled afterwards. 2014 gets here and it's not much better, but once again, she kept having these historic moments that kept people talking. She drove her best race at the Spring Kansas race, actually driving up into the top five and passing veteran drivers like Dylan Hart Jr. and Tony Stewart. She started in the top five in the Coca-Cola 600 and ran second for a little while. Stuff like that got people attention, but the negatives started to outweigh the positives. She would have these historic moments, but Danica truly wasn't getting the job done. Breaking barriers is one thing, but when it came to her performance, it wasn't good and fans started to lose patience with her. Danica running terribly is one thing, but good lord, she was a crash magnet. Yes, there was some wrecks where she couldn't do anything. It was out of her control, but most of her crashes throughout her NASCAR career was self-inflicted. You look at some of these wrecks and you're saying to yourself, how in the fuck did she get involved in that? It's like she sees a wreck and say, hold on, let me pile in with y'all. Whenever her car gets away from her, there's a low chance she gathers it up. This might sound harsh, but that's just poor car control. Poor performance and finding every possible way to crash made her a laughing stock. She also didn't help herself with multiple failed attempts at payback. I mentioned her bad performance, yeah she was driving for a pretty good team at the time which was Stuart Haas Racing, and while yes she had to go through a learning curve, she never improved as a stock car driver. To only record a grand total of 7 top 10s, no top 5s and a best points finish of 24th with a pretty good team isn't going to make people look at you in a positive light. Towards the back end of her racing career she also didn't come off that likable as a person. And you could definitely say that's still the case to this day. People already think you're not good behind the wheel of a star car, so coming off self-centered just makes you completely unlikable at this point. Her 2017 Kansas interview where she was involved in the wreck that broke Eric Amarola back wasn't a good look. Fox interviews Joy Logano first and right away he shows concern towards Eric Amarola. He never brought up anything else in that interview, he was just hoping Eric Amarola would be alright. Then Fox interviews Danica and throughout most of her interviews she's sitting there bitching about her bad luck and never acknowledge Eric Amarola until the very end and when she does it came off so nonchalant and she just came off classless in that interview. Fans gave her crap for it and rightfully so. At this point people were tired of Danica Patrick. 2017 would be her last full time season as a race car driver. To put a cap on her career she ran the 2018 Daytona 500 and the Indy 500 that same year and crashed out in both events. Her career in a nutshell. After racing, she made headlines for mostly negative reasons. Sometimes it would be for something strange or something she said, whether that's on TV or through social media. She's gotten invited to be a guest commentator for many racing series like NASCAR, IndyCar, and F1. Most people think she doesn't bring anything to the table though, especially when she's in the booth calling a stock car race. A lot of fans including myself got tired of her bringing up IndyCar while calling a stock car race. Even Clint Boyer got tired of it. There's very little similarities between the two vehicles so for her to bring up IndyCar so many times didn't make sense. Then when it comes to the F1 side of things, she doesn't seem to gel with anyone she works with on Sky Sports. Everyone has these looks on their face because she's jarring to listen to. You can definitely tell someone like Jason Button doesn't find her insightful at all and he literally told her one time that what she was saying was not correct and apparently the fans feel the same way when it comes to her being an analyst. It's pretty obvious that nobody wants to hear what she has to say because she just doesn't bring anything to the table. She doesn't do herself any favors when she's on TV. There was a time during a NASCAR qualifying session where she told a story of when Tony Ari Jr. got her eye racing rig so she can get a better feel of a stock car and she admitted that she never used it which explains a lot and I just remember fans giving her a ton of crap for that. She probably should have kept that to herself. Speaking of keeping comments to herself, this would have been the best choice regarding to Danica's comments towards Martin Truex and Sherry Pollux. Sadly, after battling ovarian cancer for many years, Sherry Pollux passed away in late 2013. Everyone is sending their condolences to Sherry and her entire family, and one of the many to do so was Martin Truex Jr. who dated Sherry for almost two decades. Apparently, Danica has never liked Martin Truex and she made it be known when she replied to a statement that Truex put out responding to Sherry's passing that reads, I avoid negativity on social media at all costs, almost, but this is the most insensitive, disconnected statement from a guy that I never liked, and obviously for good reason. I don't care what happened between them, but this is as cold as it gets. 
A PR rep wrote this guaranteed. You're free from this now, Sherry. First of all, this was an unnecessary statement to make. Instead of just sending her condolences and leaving it at that, she ends up making it about herself by airing out her personal feelings towards Martin Truex Jr. Think about how shitty that makes you look. And the time it couldn't have been worse. She waited until Sherry passes away to express her displeasure towards someone that was part of Sherry's life for many years. Truex isn't obligated to make a post on social media to the passing of Sherry. Everything doesn't need to be posted on social media. It just tells you the times we live in where everyone feels like you have to put all of your business out to the public. This post was uncalled for and Danica has no room to talk about other people's relationships because last time I checked, she has had many failed relationships of her own. Any respect that Danica had left with people was completely gone after this. She received a ton of backlash and it was deserved. A decade ago, Danica Mania was a thing and here we are a decade later and I can guarantee you that that doesn't exist anymore. All the goodwill she had with the fan base is gone. I know some people that looked at the title of this video and probably would say that she was never on the rise to begin with, but she actually was. Like I stated earlier, the beginning of the end for her was when she made the switch to stock car racing and she turned out to be one of the worst NASCAR drivers ever. But before that, she showed potential racing IndyCar and probably could have had a solid career over there. She was a big star in that series and while yes, she was far from the best, she could have continued to improve and accomplish more at IndyCar. It's not like she peaked over there like while Pablo Montoya and Sam Hornish who accomplished everything there was to accomplish in that series. Even though there was hope for Danica at the start of her NASCAR career, it became clear that she just didn't have it and became a laughing stock. If she stayed in IndyCar or if she actually would have adapted to a stock car and put up much better results, she definitely would have been viewed in a much more positive light. The only reason she made headlines is because she set a benchmark for women in motorsports. But the unfortunate part is that she set such a low bar, at least when it came to the stock car side. It definitely looks bad considering the fact that she had it made compared to other female racers like Jenna Guffrey, Johanna Long, and I even throw Nicole Bihar in there. Female racers that show more potential with less. Danica drove for a good team, had the sponsorship, she had all the resources but still underachieved. And this isn't me just talking about Danica's downfall when it comes to her racing, but just her in general. That includes who she is as a person. She has come off very unlikable compared to how she was doing her IndyCar and early NASCAR days. Danica Patrick has always been considered as a role model, but honestly, who wants to model themselves after Danica Patrick now? I think upcoming female race car drivers should strive to be way above Danica Patrick as a driver and as a person. Yes, you go on Google and type in female race car drivers and her name will be the first to appear. And while yes, she has broken barriers, which she deserves credit for, I don't think she's someone to model herself after. Just my opinion. Danica Patrick's career is filled with many what ifs and I would like to think that if she made better decisions on and off the track, she wouldn't have experienced such a downfall. She's going to continue to get praised by certain individuals and mainstream media, but the reality is that she's definitely experienced a fall from grace. Simple question for everyone. What are y'all thoughts on Danica Patrick? The comments to this should be very interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and roll up out of here. Y'all have a good one. Peace.